Hare Krishna, welcome to the lockdown program with Krishna under the umbrella of Govardhan Hill. Today we are reading and discussing the most beautiful Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna, Pandava Prabhu and Bhagavati Madhuri Hare Krishna Samir, Hare Krishna Prakash and Anil is trying to get in. The audio is not yet connected. Wonderful to have you all here. Samir, we're going to have a very focused meeting tonight and I would love to ask Pandava Prabhu and Bhagavati Madhuri to start with some Kirtan. He said, all right. Hare Krishna, Hare Rama. Yes, we, we will continue uh, the yeah. song for uh, more so, um, shlokas from Jagannatha Staka. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Samia, yes. Samia, your hand is up. Yeah, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I just I just wanted to say focus, focus. Do you remember? Yes, yes. Therefore I said we're gonna have a focused meeting tonight. Thank you. Oh I, I didn't okay. hear you. sorry. Okay, okay. Hare Krishna, Pandava Prabhu, Bhagavad Gita, the microphone is all yours. Upakalnya sadaya Daya sindul bandu Sakala jagatam sindu sutaya Jagannatha swami nayana patagami Kavatu ma Jagannatha swami nayana patagami Kavatu ma Jagannatha Swami Nayana Patagami Bhavadoma Parabrahma Pidaku Balaya Dalot Pula Nayano Nivashini Nadro Nihita Charano Nanta Shirasi Rasa Nandora Dhasha Rasa Bapuda Linga Nasuko Jagannatha Swami Nayana Patagami Bapatuma Jagannatha Swami Nayana Patagami Bapatuma Jagannatha Swami Nayana
translation when Lord Jagannath moves along the road on his Radhayata card at every step large assemblies of brahmanas loudly chant prayers and sing songs for his prayer hearing the hymns Lord Jagannath becomes very favorably disposed towards them he is the ocean of mercy and the true friend of all the world May that Jagannatha Swami, along with his consort Lakshmi, born from the ocean of nectar, be the object of my vision. Lord Jagannath, whose eyes resemble full-blown lotus petals, is the ornament on Lord Brahma's head. He's resi he resides on Nilachala Hill with his... Uh, he is sides on Nilacha hills with his lotus feet, placed. lotus feet placed on the heads of Anantadev. Overwhelmed by the mellows of love, he joyfully embraces Srimati Radharani's body, which is like a cool pond. May that Jagannath's family be the object of my vision. I do not pray for a kingdom, nor do I pray for gold, rubies, or wealth. I do not ask for a beautiful wife as desired by all men. I simply pray that Jagannatha Swami, whose glories Lord Shiva always sings, may be the constant object of my vision. O oh Lord of the demigods, please quickly remove the useless material existence I am undergoing. O oh Lord of the Yadus, please destroy this vast, shoreless ocean of sins. Alas, this is certain. Lord Jagannath bestows his lotus feet upon those who feel themselves fallen and have no shelter in this world but him. May that Jagannath's family be the object of my vision. The self-retrained virtuous soul who recites these eight verses glorifying Lord Jagannath becomes cleansed of all sins 
and duly proceeds to Lord Vishnu's abode. Haribol. Haribol. Hare Bol, Hare Krishna, Vandama Brabhu and Bhagavati Mata Chi, beautiful Chakanad Ashtakam. Thank you very much. Chakanad Daswami Ki Jai. Chakanad Supadra Baladev Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Welcome everyone. Welcome Samir. Welcome Anil, still struggling with the audio, with one foot in and one foot out. Welcome Prakash. Welcome Ben and Dharm and Amit and Varshana. It looks like a full house. Whenever you have a problem with the audio, you can also connect by uh, different audio, by phone audio, and uh, there is a few alternatives if the internet audio doesn't work. And it gives you the alternatives uh, when you log in. And if it still doesn't work, log out and log back in again. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. So, a little bit of Prabhupada Nectar. Physical presence is not essential. Srila Prabhupada says that's a heading. Never think that I am absent from you. Physical presence is not essential. Presence by message or hearing is real touch. Lord Krishna is present by his message, which was delivered 5,000 years ago. We feel always the presence of our past Acharyas simply by the immutable instructions. I hope you will understand me right and do so needful. That was a letter to my dear students on the 2nd of August at in, 70, in 67. So there is another little snippet, Mission Fulfilled. That's a heading. According to revealed scriptures, if a spiritual master can convert even one soul into a perfectly pure devotee, his mission in life is fulfilled. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur always used to say, even at the expense of all the properties, temples and math that I have, if I could convert even one person into a pure devotee, my mission would be fulfilled. That is a quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita Adilila 791, Purport. And one more. According to the price of the dress he has paid. The living entity is unborn and eternal. The living entity simply changes his dress according to the price of the dress he has paid for. That's from Back to Godhead, Nationalism of Pure Consciousness. Back to Godhead, 6.20.56. So, according to the price of the dress he has paid for. That's, of course, our karma. Okay, that is all the nectar quotes I have. Um, Pandava Brabo, you have any nice quote in your wonderful book? Yes, I can definitely. So. Okay, go ahead. In 1968, when Srila Prabhupada was seeing Shivananda, the first devotee to go to Europe, Prabhupada warned him to be careful and said, I was an old Calcutta, Calcutta boy, said Prabhupada. When I came to New York, I never got cheated. Hmm. I'm not sure where is the end. One afternoon, when Prabhupada's books brought him, uh, when Prabhupada's cook brought him his prasadam, Prabhupada did not like the look of the potatoes. Why are they pinkish? He asked. I don't know, Shla Prabhupada, <laughs> the girl replied. They are rotten, said Shla Prabhupada. They put them in cold storage and they are rotten. Everyone is cheating. The whole world is cheating. This material world is rotten. 
Later in the afternoon, Shri Prabhupada talked uh, farther with the devotees about the rotten potatoes and how it was an indication of the material world's cheating. So it looks like and that was part of the uh, 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 Prabhupada's uh, talk sometimes about cheater and the cheated. Hare Krishna, one, beautiful, rotten. <laughs> one, one more. Shla Prabhupada was anxious when he discovered how the devotees were being cheated in different ways by the contractors in the construction of the Krishna Balaram temple. One morning, Prabhupada was examining that, so that was in India, of course, Vrindavan. <laughs> One morning, Prabhupada was examining the outside of the building where there was an unusual mixture of patterns. Prabhupada decided that the stone patterns were another form of cheating. He said, they have given you rejected stone and made this arrangement. One of the devotees argued, but Prabhupada, actually it is a pattern. They had to turn here in the wall, so they made a different pattern. Prabhupada said the explanation was nonsense and that it was not a pattern. The contractors uh, had given them rejected stone and charged them for good stone. The devotee, however, persisted, persisted in his explanation, uh, saying again, but Prabhupada, it is isn't a pattern. Yes, it is a pattern, said Shri Prabhupada. It is a clown's pattern, and you are a fool for thinking it's a pattern. So probably there are tons and tons of such episodes. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Pandava Prabhu. Beautiful memory series. But if you can always prepare a memory, mm -hmm. I don't know if that was prepared or ad hoc, huh? uh, just pick out something not too long, not too short, and something really inspiring. Of course, they're all wonderful, but some are seemingly more wonderful than others. But I mean, okay. we can see Srila Prabhupada's uh, uh, connection or Krishna consciousness always from rotten potatoes immediately the whole material world is rotten. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> I like that. Beautiful. Okay. That was um, Nectar, Prabhupada Nectar. And now let's jump into the Srimad Bhagavatam straight away. The link is in the chat. 19627. And we use scroll down we we'll come to, we have done Parashuram and we come to Vashishta, a new paragraph with explanation about Vashishta. And I would like to ask Samir to read us a little bit about Vashishta Muni, the great sage, a little historical background. Is that all right, Samir? Hare Krishna, that is fine, yes. Okay, have you found it, Vashishta? I'm just getting to it, yes. Um, A few paragraphs down after Parashuram is Vashishta, next one, that where we stopped. Parashuram, yeah, Parashuram, ah, Vashishta, yeah. Okay, so... Um, then what announced to everybody, Hare Krishna. I hope you're all well. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Vasista, the great celebrated sage among the Brahmins, well known as the Brahmasri, Vasista Deva. He is a prominent figure in both Ramana, Ramayan and Mahabharata periods. He celebrated the coronation ceremony 
of the personality of Goddard, Sri Ram. He was present also on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. He could approach all the higher and lower planets, and his name is also connected with the history of Hiranyakashipu. There was a great tension between him and Vishwamitra, Vishwamitra who wanted his Kama, Kama de Henu, wish fulfilling cow. The system only refused to spare his uh, Kama Denu, and for this, Vishwamitra killed his 100 sons. As a perfect Brahmin, he tolerated all the towns of Vishwamitra. Once he tried to commit suicide on account of Vishwamitra's torture, but all his attempts were unsuccessful. He jumped from a hill, but the stones on which he fell became a sack of cotton, and thus he was saved. He jumped into the ocean, but the waves washed him ashore. He jumped into the river, but the river also washed him ashore. Thus, all his suicide attempts were unsuccessful. He is also one of the seven rishis and husband of Arundha, Arundhati, Arundhati, the famous star. Indra, Indra Praman, Indra Pramada. Can I stop, uh, interrupt you here, Samir? Thank you for uh, set reading. The so question is, how is it possible this great sage uh, was at Lord Ram, which was, um, I guess, Treta Yuga, and then he was also uh, present at the Mahabharat. Samir. Is it, is it because he, he lived that long? He lived for that long? Yeah. Yes, exactly. They say, they say they can prolong their life in thousands and hundreds of thousands of years. Okay, carry on with Indra Pramada. Indra Pramada, another celebrated Rishiki. Trita, one of the three sons of Prajapati Gautam, he was the third son, and his other two brothers were known as Ekat and Devita. All the brothers were great sages and strict followers of principles of religion. By dint of severe penances, they were promoted to the Brahma Lord, the planet where Brahma was. Once Tritamuni fell into a well, he was an organizing a work, worker of many sacrifices, and as one of the great sages, he also came to show respect to Bhishmaji at his deathbed. He was one of the seven sages in the Varuna Loka. He hailed from the western countries of the world. As such, most probably he belonged to the European countries. At that time, the whole world was under one Vedic culture. Gritsa Mada, one of the sages of the heavenly kingdom. He was a close friend of Indra, the king of heaven, and was, a great, was as great as Brihaspati. He used to visit the royal assembly of Maharaj Yudhishthira, and he also visited the place where Bhishma Dev breathed his, his last. Sometimes he explained the glories of Lord Shiva before Maharaj Yudhishthira. He was the son of Vityahevya, and he resembled in features the body of Indra. Sometimes the enemies of Indra mistook him to be Indra and arrested him. He was a great scholar of the Reg Veda, and thus he was highly respected by the Brahmana community. He lived a life of celibacy and was powerful in every respect. Asita, there was a king of the same name, but herein the Asita mentioned is the Asita Devala Rishi a great powerful sage of the time. He explained to his father 1,500,000 verses from the Mahabharata. He was one of the members in the snake sacrifice of Maharaj Janamajai 
Jana Majaya. He was also present during the coronation ceremony of Maharaj Yudhishthira, along with other great wishes. He also gave Maharaj Yudhishthira instructions while he was on the Anjana Hill. He was also one of the devotees of Lord Shiva. And I stop you here a second, Samir. Uh, a question before we go to Kakshivan. Uh, Asita, where do we know Asita from the Bhagavad Gita? Anyone? He comes in a Bhagavad Gita verse. Anyone? Pandava Prabhu? Uh, I just remember Asita Devala Vyasa and I. Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna is praying. Yeah, Arjuna is praying. Universe of oh, yes, about in the universe. Arjuna was uh, glorifying Krishna when he saw uh, universal form, and he mentioned that name. Yes, absolutely. Name. Thank you, Pandava. Thank you, uh, Bhagavad Mataji. Uh, and yes, Bhagavad Mataji, absolutely right. Asita Devala and Vyas. And so if verse is a famous verse, a very important verse, we should all know. Param Brahma Param Dhamma Pavidram Param Bhavan. Arjuna said, you are the supreme personality of Godhead, the ultimate abode, the pure, the absolute truth. You are the eternal, transcendental, original person, the unborn, the greatest, all the great sages, such as Narada, Asita, Devala and Vyas, confirm this truth about you. And now you yourself are declaring it to me. So this is a famous verse where Arjuna is confirming the Godhead, uh, the supreme position of Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada in the purport, uh, he says, not only one might think, Arjuna is just saying, Param Brahma Param Dharma, Pavitram, uh, because he is Krishna's friend. But then Arjuna gives reference, uh, Asita, Devala, and even Vyasadev, they're all saying the same thing. So it's authorized. So that is a reference to Bhagavad Gita. Okay, Samir, can you continue with Kakshivan? Kakshivan, one of the sons of Gautamani and the father of the great sage Kanda Koshika. He was one of the members of parliament of Maharaj Yudhishthira. Atri, Atri Muni was a great Brahmana sage and was one of the men, mental sons of Brahmaji, Brahmaji. Brahmaji is so powerful that simply by thinking of a son, he can have it. These sons are known as Manasya Putras, out of seven Manasya Putras of Brahmaji, and out of the seven great Brahmana sages, Atri was one. In his family, the great pra Prachetas were also born. Atri Muni had two Kastriya sons who became kings. King Artama is one of them. He is counted as one of the 21 Prajapatis. His wife's name was Anasyu, Anasuya, Anasuya, and he helped, and he helped Maharaj Parikshit in his great sacrifices. Koshika, one of the permanent. Can I step? Uh, just stop you here uh, a second. Uh, who are the Prachetas? Prachetas, where our Mahabharata experts, Rashmi, who are the Prachetas? Vaishnava Mataji, who are the Prachetas? <coughs> Pandava Prabhu, who are the Prachetas? So the story is in, uh, oh, now I don't remember. Six or seven? No. Six or eighth canto. Uh, hundred. There were hundred sons of 
No, I don't remember exactly. No, 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 no. But they they were um, inspired by Lord Shiva to to uh, there are prayers given by Lord Shiva to to Prachetas about worshiping uh, Lord Vishnu sure. Narayan, sure. and they performed uh, austerities at the at the bottom of the lake. That's, okay. That's all I need. Valmiki was the son of... What was that? Okay. I thought, obviously, wrongly, the Prachetas were uh, uh, those personalities who have been thrown into the Ganga by Ganga uh, uh, until Bhishma Dev. That's not correct, I guess so. Okay. Can we continue with Kaushika? Kaushika, one of the permanent Rishi members in the Royal Assembly of Maharaj Yudhisthira. He sometimes met Lord Krishna. There are several other sages of the same name. Sudarshan, this wheel, which is accepted by the first anti Godhead Vishnu or Krishna as his personal weapon, is the most powerful weapon greater than the Brahmastha or similar other disastrous weapons. In some of the Vedic literatures, it is said that Agni Dev, the fire god, presented this weapon to Lord Shri Krishna. But factually, this weapon is eternally carried by the Lord. Agni Dev presented this weapon to Krishna in the same way that Rukmani was given by Maharaj Rukma, to the Lord. The Lord accepts such presentations from his devotees, even though such presentations are eternally his property. There is an elaborate description of this weapon in the Adi Parva of the Mahabharat. Lord Sri Krishna used this weapon to kill Sisupal, the rival of the Lord. He also killed Salva by this weapon. And sometimes he wanted his friend Arjun to use it to kill his enemies. Mahabharat Virata Parva 56.3. Thank you, Samir. That concludes our text six and seven of the ninth chapter of the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Just quickly before we move to text eight, uh, a few examples. Where did the Lord use his Sudarshan chakra? Uh, one example we have in Srila Prabhupada's purport, uh, where he killed Shishupal. Anyone can uh, remember any other occasions where the Sudarshan chakra was summoned? Vaishana Mataji. I'm just thinking about that. I remember Shishupal. He had passed his hundred sins, so Krishna had released this election. That was already mentioned uh, in Srila Prabhupada's purpose. Any other occasions? No? Ben, what about you? I am. There's an occasion when uh, the uh, uh, there was one uh, one um, One uh, Rishi, he, he uh, upset uh, Ambrish Maharaj, and uh, I think it was Devarshim. It was Devarshimuni. He upset I Ambrish think Maharaj, so. and uh, because he had made an offense against the pure devotee, and the Lord is a protector of the devotee, so the Sudarshan Chakra. Was uh, was uh, dispatched, <laughs> and uh, the Varshi Muni uh, he had to run all over the universe. He was asking all the demigods how to help him. Brahma, Shiva, even Lord Vishnu, and then he couldn't get any help anywhere. But Lord Vishnu, being merciful towards him, told them the only the only way you can uh, counteract this uh, offense is to actually go to the devotee personally and ask for his forgiveness. 
So that's one uh, occasion where uh, the Sula Sun Chakra. And then I think there's another one as well. Let's first have Samir, another one, and hold on, Ben. Samir? From did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu order the Sula Sun Chakra? When? When uh, was it Jagai and Madai? Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Well, well remembered. Thank you, Samir. Uh, ben, another occasion? There's an occasion where, uh, is it says, uh, Salva, Salva. I don't. Sal sh 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 shalva, Salva. Shall we have Vaishnav Mataji uh, telling us the story? Sorry, in, I, in short. I, I couldn't remember the name. Um, was it the Mama? Because during the war, um, I think is whether it was Salva or someone else, um, he tried to kill one of the um, warriors behind their back, and Krishna saw that, and that's where he releases the chakra and cuts off his hand. Uh, was it Salvia or Salva? I, I'm, I'm not sure either. Um, I couldn't so his personality we're speaking about is Shalva. Ben, is would you corroborate that? I don't recall that story. Thank you, Vaishana Mataji. Ben, do you know more about Shalva? I don't know more, any more about that story. So okay, I only really know the name. Okay, right. Let's uh, have that done here, and let's move on to our next text, which is text 8. And I would like to ask Rashmi Mataji, can you read us text 8 of the ninth chapter of the first canto? Hare Krishna, yes. Text 8. Annecha munayo brahman, brahmar, brahmar ratadayo mala, shishir, Upeta Ajamu Kashya Pangira Sadayaha Kashya Pangira Sadayaha. Many others and many others like Kushukadev Goswami and other purified souls, Kashya and Angirasa and others, all accompanied by their receptive, respective disciples, arrived there. Papa Shukadev Goswami, Brahmartha, the famous son and disciple of Sri Vyasadeva, who taught him first the Mahabharata and then Sri Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam. Shukadev Goswami recited one, I don't know how to say that, one million four hundred thousand yes. verses. Yes. Yeah, one million four hundred thousand verses of the Mahabharata in the councils of the Gandharvas, Yakshas. Uh, and Rakshasas, and he recited Srimad Bhagavatam for the first time in the presence of Maharaj Parikshit. He thoroughly studied all the Vedic literatures from his great father. Thus, he was a completely purified soul by dint of his extensive knowledge in the principles of religion. From Mahabharat Sabha Parva 4.11, it is understood that he was also present in the royal assembly of Maharaj Yudhishthir and at the fasting of Maharaj Parikshit. As a bona fide disciple of Sri Vyasadev, he inquired from his father very extensively about religious principles and spiritual values. And his great father also satisfied him by teaching him the yoga system by which one can attain the spiritual kingdom, the difference between fruitive work and empiric knowledge, the ways and means of attaining spiritual realization, the four ashrams, nearly the student life, householder life, retired life and renounced life the sublime position of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the process of seeing him eye to eye, the bona fide candidate for receiving knowledge, the consideration of the five elements, the unique position of intelligence, the consciousness of the material nature and the living entity, the symptoms of the self-realized soul, the working principles of the material body, the symptoms of the influential modes of nature, the tree of perpetual desire and psychic activities. Sometimes he went to the sun planet with the permission of his father and Naraji. 
Descriptions of his travel in space are given in the Shanti Parva of the Mahabharat 332. At last he attained the transcendental realm. He is known by different names like Araneya, Araneya, Aruni Sutta, Vaisakhi, Vyas Atmaja. Kashyap, one of the Prajapatis, the son of Marichi and one of the son-in-laws of Prajapati Daksha. He is the father of the gigantic bird Garud, who was given elephants and tortoises as eatables. He married 13 daughters of Prajapati Daksha, and their names are Aditi, Diti, Danu, Kasht, Arishta, Surasa, Ila, Muni, Krodhavasa, Tamra, Surabhi, Sarama, and Timi. He begot many children, both demigods and demons, by those wives. From his first wife, Aditi, all the 12 Adityas were born. One of them is Vaman, the incarnation of Godhead. The great sage Kashyap was also present at the time of Arjun's birth. He received a presentation of the whole world from Parshuram, and later on, he asked Parshuram to go out of the world. His other name is Arishtanemi. He lives on the northern side of the universe. Angirasa, he is the son of Mahara, Maharshi Angira and is known as Brihaspati, the priest of the demigods. It is said that Dronacharya was his partial incarnation. Shukracharya was the spiritual master of the demons and Brihaspati challenged him. His son is Kacha and he delivered the fire weapon first to Bharadvaj Muni. He begot six sons like the fire god by his wife, Chandramasi, one of the reputed stars. He could travel in space and therefore he could present himself even in the planets of Brahmalok and Indralok. He advised the king of heaven, Indra, about conquering the demons. Once he cursed Indra, who thus had to become a hog on the earth and was unwilling to return to heaven. Such is the power of the attraction of the illusionary energy. Even a hog does not wish to part with its earthly possessions in exchange for a heavenly kingdom. He was a religious preceptor of the natives of different planets. Thank you very much, Rashmi Mataji. Yes, of course, we have repeated this story with Indra uh, becoming a hawk many times. No need of saying it again. Uh, just picking two names, uh, Shukracharya. He was a spiritual master of the demons. Where do we know Shukracharya from? In which connection? Rashmi, do you remember Shukracharya? Where does so he... We, I think uh, in the uh, uh, the pastime of uh, Bali Maharaj. Exactly. exactly. Yes. He yes. gives wrong advice to Bali Maharaj. Anyway. Okay, that was Shukracharya. One more question. Uh, in which connection do we remember Daksha, Rachapati Daksha? Um, Isn't he father of uh, uh, Sat Satimata? Yes, and in which connection, what pastime, just in very brief, uh, without describing it? I cannot remember, but I remember sixth canto we studied, no? that uh, he held a sacrificial fire and he didn't invite Shiva to it and Parvati went and then she um, self-immolated herself. That's all I can remember. And there is there okay. some instruction also. Which okay, thank you, Rashmi Mataji. Samir, your hand is up. We do hand raising again. Let's uh, just a reminder for everyone. And Samir has always been uh, perfectly in his hand raising. Samir, where do we know this bit, a very brief outline of Daksha? Daksha, was Daksha the one who had the sons? And um, was it Narad Muni who was telling them, telling his sons to become brahmacharis and not to marry? That I don't remember. Pandava Prabhu. No. Uh, yes, exactly. And it happened, uh, I think, three times. And yes. finally, Daksha was so angry that he cursed Narada. Yes. So he won't get uh, a place, a permanent place to stay, which means that he cursed Narada to be a, a constant traveler. 
<laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you very much, Pandava but Prabhu. I of course, because of something else, of course, that was just yes. I mean, the connection with uh, Sati uh, said uh, he very much misbehaved. He didn't respect Lord Shiva, and and and. But said we know, and then he got the goat's head. There's a nice picture. Hare Krishna. Okay, so that is enough. Anyone has any question before we move to text nine? Pandava, your hand is up or still up? Okay, no, go ahead. Up again. Uh, it's up again. Uh, uh, in this verse, in this purport, in, in the, the previous one, um, uh, there are two names of the two wives were mentioned of different rishis, and they are uh, they are explained or they said they were. Let me find it. Uh, for instance, by his wife Chandramasi, one of the reputed stars. And the previous verse was another one, and also mentioned as a famous star. How we can actually understand this? It's a good question. The question is, uh, how is there a famous star, sir? At the same time, because the, let's say the, the, let's say these are uh, um, demigod demigoddesses or or you know residents of the higher planetary systems, and they are they are mentioned or they are called stars, which are not so. It, in the sense that they are planets, so I don't know. This is kind of interesting. well. Why not? Huh? Uh, we think of stars or planets as some um, really uh, extraordinary creation. They are extraordinary creations, but a yogi he can uh, create a star. A planet just by his desire. That's an accomplished uh, yogi, so it's not all that amazing. So, why say cannot be stars and uh, uh, personalities at the same time? Well, it appears they are. I don't have any further insight how that can be uh, because the stars. Well, the planets say have presiding deities. They are personalized. So, Surya, sound planet, sound planet is not just a mass of matter of hot, hot uh, magna or whatever uh, is Surya Dev inside that planet, and from his bodily effulgence and all of the citizens and the city's effulgence, the sun get its shine from her. So I do see why not this uh, Davies can be stars at the same time. In the spiritual power, everything is possible. That's all I can say. If anybody else comes across something, more an explanation we can in due course we can look at that okay let's move on to text nine i would like to ask ben to give us a reading of text nine if that is okay ben are you okay with text nine we moving on starting with tanzame tan okay here you are just Go ahead. Bear with me. Tan samitan mahabagan Upala baya Vasutama Pujayam Asa dharma Gano Desha kala Vibhagavit Translation. Uh, Bhishma Dev, who was the best 
amongst the eight vassals received and welcomed all the great and powerful rishis who were assembled there, for he knew perfectly all the religious principles according to time and place. Purport by his divine grace, Asi Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Expert religionists know perfectly well how to adjust religious principles in terms of time and place. All the great acharyas or religious preachers or reformers of the world executed their mission by adjustment of religious principles in terms of time and place. There are different climates and situations in different parts of the world. And if one has to discharge his duties to preach the message of the Lord, he must be expert in adjusting things in terms of time and place. Bhishma Dev was one of the 12 great authorities in preaching this cult of devotional service. And therefore, he could receive and welcome all the powerful sages assembled there at his deathbed from all parts of the universe. He was certainly unable at that time to welcome and receive them physically because he was neither at his home nor in a normal healthy condition. But he was quite fit by the activities of his sound mind and therefore he could utter sweet words with hearty, hearty expressions and all of them were well received. One can perform one's duty by physical work, by mind and by words, and he knew well how to utilize them in the proper place. And therefore, there was no difficulty for him to receive them, although physically unfit. Thank you very much, Ben. Uh, if someone question, Srila Prabhupada says, one can perform one's duty by physical work, by mind, and by words. Um, uh, whenever we uh, worship the deity, we must meditate also. How is that called? Uh, to do these activities by mind, or we can remember the Brahmin who meditated on doing the sweet rice. Uh, for all in meditation with all paraphernalia. He was so poor, he had nothing. And he stuck his finger in the sweet rice and he woke up of his meditation, the finger was burnt. So how is that kind of puja called by mind? Samir. Manasya Seva. Manasa. Manasya. Manasa. Manasa. Not ya. Manasa Pucha. Right? Manasa Pucha. Very well. Thank you, Samir. So that's Manasa Pucha. I have another question. Uh, Bishmadev was one of the 12 great authorities. Uh, what, what are they called? I mean, not the 12. We can also find out what the 12 are. But... Uh, What are they called? What's the Sanskrit term? We have recently, uh, Rashmi spoke about and she got something mixed up. So someone else and Rashmi. What are the, uh, what's the term for the 12 great authorities? Anyone? Hands up? No. So Rashmi, give us a name, the Sanskrit name for this great authorities ben uh, the only name that comes to mind is the mahajan yes the mahajan and i wonder can we get this mahajans uh, 12 can we get them uh, sorted anyone prabhuji i also found out uh, bhishma pitama was uh, mahajan but he was also a Paramhansa. So he was Hare both. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sure. Thank you very much. So, who are the 12 Mahajans? That's the question. Anyone? I can try, Prabhuji. Yeah. Who? So there is Bhishma Dev, Prahlad yes. Maharaj, Bali yes. Maharaj, um, yes. Yamaraj, Yes. Then uh, Janak. 
Raja Janak. Yes. Yes. Five. Lord Shiva is also Lord Shiva. Yeah. Narad Muni, Shiva, Lord Shiva. Narad Muni. Lord, uh, Lord Brahma. Is Brahma, Lord Brahma. Mahajan. Shukadev Goswami. Seven, eight. If Brahma is there, then that makes it nine. So we're yes. missing some. We so we'll some. ask uh, Pandava Prabhu, who are we missing? We are seemingly missing three more Mahajans. Have we missed? Are the Kumaras, you? are the four Kumaras counted as Mahajans? I don't know. I would have to look it up. Anyone? Sanat Kumar is he, he's, he's a Mahajan. Okay, here we go. Sanat Kumar is a Mahajan and uh, Shwayambhuva Manu. Okay, that's beautiful. Uh, okay, here is a full list. According to Srimad Bhagavatam, there are 12 Mahajans Brahma, Lord Shiva, Narada, Vais, Vasvata, Manu. That is our. I believe that's our present Manu. Kapila is also Mahajan, son of Devahuti. The Kumaras, not just some, are not all of them. Number eight, uh, no, uh, number seven, Pralat. Number eight, Bhishma. And number nine, Chanak. Ten, Bali, we had said. Eleven, Shukadev and Yamaraj. These are the twelve Mahachans. So... I will put that in the chat so we all can uh, remember that or go back to it whenever we need to. Here it is. Here are the 12 Mahachans. Hare Krishna. So let's move on. Uh, now, one more question. Srila Prabhupada writes in the purport. Uh, he speaks about adjustment of religious principles in terms of time and place. Uh, anyone can remember any adjustment of religious principles Srila Prabhupada did? Because he writes here there are different climates and situations in different parts of the world and so on and so on. So what adjustment did Srila Prabhupada do? Samir, hands is up. Thank you. Was, was it the time when he um, he spoke about um, minimum rounds? He Absolutely. No. From 64 to 16. Yes. Thank you, Samir. That is an adjustment because <laughs> Westerners were just not able. And even 16 huh, seems to be so difficult for even devotees here. 16, from 64 to 16. That was an adjustment. Any other adjustment Srila Prabhupada did? We did many adjustments according to time, place and circumstances. Anyone can remember any other adjustment? Samir. Was it the time as well when he went to America and then he was... Was he staying somewhere and they were having meat or something that he adjusted to it? That was the Agawals. There was meat in the fridge. Yeah. His first place, Sally Agawal, where he stayed. First contact. That was the only address he had from India. So when he came freshly, he traveled to the Agawal's house. So what was his adjustment? He adjusted so that um, he just tolerated it. He tolerated it. Yeah, but we're speaking of an adjustment of religious principles. Huh? But that is a beautiful story. He tolerated it. In fact, not only he tolerated it, as the Agawals, he said, uh, please don't feel offended, said I don't eat meat. We, you have to go. Oh, that is a very shame because you a uh, you are the walking encyclopedia of Srimad Bhagavatam. Whenever we have a question, we're asking you 
And now you're going. What can be done? See you on Saturday. Thank you very much, Pandava Prabhu and Bhagavati Mataji. It was wonderful of having you here. Hare Krishna. So, any other adjustments? Srila Prabhupada did of religious principles according to time, place and circumstances. Anyone can think of something? What about Ekadashi? That's an adjustment. No grains, no beans, no pulses. In India, Ekadashi is much more elaborate. So it's an adjustment, it's a minimum, minimum. He wanted devotees to follow at least no grains, no beans, no pulses. And of course, increasing our hearing and chanting. Any other adjustment? Anyone? Hands up if you can think of any other adjustment. Okay, I'll come up with one more. Srila Prabhupada introduced the Brahmacharini Ashram. In India, there is not such a thing as a Brahmacharini Ashram. In Iskon, perhaps, yes, but otherwise in the tradition, not. Women had no place in the temple or staying in an, in an ashram. They were at home, either with their husband or with their children. So, but the ladies came forward in America to Srila Prabhupada. They wanted also become Krishna conscious and serve Srila Prabhupada and serve the mission and so on. And uh, one particular uh, devotee comes to mind, she had been thrown out by her family. She had no shelter, nowhere to go. So Srila Prabhupada gave shelter to the ladies at the time and created the Brahmacharini Ashram. So many adjustments, many adjustments. Let's move on to text 10. And I would like to ask Varshana Kishori Mataji to give us a reading of text 10 of the ninth chapter of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Is that okay with you, Varshana? Text 10? Hare Krishna. Are you there, Varshana Mataji? She is gone. Who hasn't been Dharm? Can you do text 10? Yes, uh, Hare Krishna. Um, Krishna Jatat Pravava Jana. Prabhava. Pravava Jana. Not Jana. Gya. Prabhava, yeah, like yeah. Giana. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Giana. Yeah, Giana. Yeah. Yeah. Prabhava Giana. Ashinam Jagat Vishvaram. What? What is that first word? Rodistram. No. Riddhi. R with a dot is ri, like in Krishna. Riddhi. No, ro, ri. Okay. Riddhi. Riddhi. Yidhisthram uh, Pujayam Asa Maya Yogata. And, and if you can also, you said Asa, but there is a line over the first A. It's Asa, not Asa, Asa. Yeah, okay. We can also honor that a uh, little bit uh, with a line over that makes uh, a stress on the first A, not on the second. Asa, okay, last line. It's an asa. Uh, ma ya yo puta vigra. Pata, pata. Ma ya yo pata, pata. Oh, pata. Oh, pata. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Ma ya yo pata vigra home. Translation. Translation. Yeah. Lord Shri Krishna is situated in everyone's heart, yet he manifests his transcendental form by his internal potency. 
this very Lord was sitting before Bhishma Deva, and since Bhishma Deva knew of his glories, he worshipped him duly, uh, purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta, Shri Swami Prabhupada. The Lord's omnipotency is displayed by his simultaneous presence in every place. He's, he is present always in his eternal abode, Goloka Vindavana, and still he is present in everyone's heart and even within every invisible atom. When he manifests his internal transcendental form in the material world, he does so by his eternal potency. The external potency or the material energy has nothing to do with his external form. All these truths were known to Shri. Eternal Shri. form, not external form. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> sorry, yeah. Um, Quite a difference, external form <laughs> and eternal form, isn't it? Okay, um, the external potency or the material energy has nothing to do with his eternal form. All these truths were known to Shri Vishmadeva. We worshipped him accordingly. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much. A quick question. Uh, what form of the Lord is within every invisible atom? What is what form of the Lord? Is it Krishna playing his flute? Dharm. Is it? Uh, it's the Vishnu. Is it the? Uh Krishna. Is it? Yes, it is a four-handed Vishnu. Yeah. Hare Krishna. And uh, the Paramatma, we recently spoke, so Paramatma, and we clarified uh, <coughs> the Paramatma, the size of the Paramatma is the size of a thumb. Okay. Any questions? To this verse by anyone? Prakash, you have to leave. Hare Krishna. You sleep well and we'll see you on Saturday. <clears throat> Amit is gone. He just disappeared very silently. And Anil is still hanging somewhere. Okay, who, who hasn't been reading so far? Vaishana. Yes. Vaishana Madhuchi, can you read us text 11? My, um, the link is gone. The link is gone. Oh, Krishna. So I'm, I'm happy for somebody else to read. I'll just listen to them. I'm too tired today, probably. <laughs> You're too tired today? You don't want to well. read a little bit? No, I'll just listen. Thank you. Okay. So I think everybody had a turn. Did we forget anyone? Ben, you had a turn? Let's go back to Samir then. Samir, are you there? Hare Krishna. Samir, yeah, did, did Ben have a turn? Yes, Ben yes. had a turn. Yes, yes. Everybody had a turn, right? Okay, so Samir, okay. go ahead. Text 11, that's our last text for tonight. And then we have a little bit of sharing. Rashmi, prepare your what you have learned or anybody else we want to hear also from Dharma about your Tulsi, Vaishana, Food for Life and Ben, whatever you have. And Samir, Africa preaching. So go ahead. Text 11. Samir. Pandu Putran Upasinan Prasraya Prema Sangatan Abhaya Chat Abhaya Kastanu Anuraga Sre Andabhutena Chakshusha This is very long, long, difficult words. Anyway, let's move on. I don't want to correct you on every and everything, otherwise you get um, disheartened. So go ahead with the translation, Samir. Translation and the Prophet is divine with Srila Prabhupada. The sons of Maharaj Pandu 
were sitting silently nearby, overtaken with affection for their dying grandfather. Seeing this, Vishmadev congratulated them with feeling. There were tears of ecstasy in his eyes, for he was overwhelmed by love and affection. But when Maharaj Pandu died, his sons were all small children, and naturally they were brought up under the affection of all elderly members of the royal family, specifically by Bhishma Dev. Later on, when the Pandavas were grown up, they were cheated by cunning Duryodhan and company. And Bhishma Dev, although he knew that the Pandavas were innocent and were unnecessarily put into trouble, could not take the side of the Pandavas for political reasons. At the last stage of his life, when Bhishma Dev saw his most exalted grandsons, headed by Maharaj Yudhishthira, sitting very gently at his side, the great warrior grandfather could not check his loving tears, which were automatically flowing from his eyes. He remembered the great tri tribulations suffered by his most pious grandsons. Certainly, he was the most satisfied man because of Yudhishthira's being enthroned in place of Duryodhana. And thus he began to congratulate them. Thank you, Zamiya. Hare Krishna. Is there anything to be said? It's, it's quite historical. Um, or you, you pick up anything that needs to be highlighted, Samir? Um, not really, no. Okay, it's just a, a historical account. Uh, here we have spoken about that very point, why Bhishma Dev took the Kaurava side, and we have called it in different ways. And here in this purpose, Srila Prabhupada calls it out of political reasons. So these things are there, but uh, he was so happy to see Maharaj Yudhishthira uh, enthroned, even after all the killing of the Mahabharat war, Hare Krishna. So I would say here we stop, and uh, we have finished text 11. And a little bit on the sharing side. I will like to start with, let's do some sharing. We'll start with Samir Prabhu. Tell us any stories from Africa. Uh, Hare Krishna, everybody. Um, I don't really have much stories to tell. Um, just, That's uh, not true. You told me a story of that gentleman you walked with. Oh, yes. Uh, Go I can ahead. Share that with you. Please, I, share I just with want to hear that too. Okay. Well, as you know, I'm in Africa and I have the, there's a temple just on my street and I go to this temple. And when I first went, well, not first time, but when I was fairly new, I took one of my uh, local staff members with me. And he is an African guy. So I took him inside and told him to sit. And they told me, uh, you cannot come in. I said, why? He said, oh, no, he has to sit outside. I said, oh. And uh, I said, why is it? He said, oh, because, you know, he's eating meat. So I said, oh, okay. So then I sent him outside, and he was sitting outside waiting for me. And um, anyway, uh, just a few weeks ago, um, I walk with this gentleman because he lives in the direction of my house. So we, we walk together back home and he talks to me a lot. And he was asking me, he says, oh, do you drink? I says, no, I don't drink alcohol. And he was quite shocked. He says, oh, you come from the UK and you don't drink. I says, no. <laughs> <laughs> And, that sounds uh, like uh, everybody in the UK is a drunkard. It's probably <laughs> a good guess. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they just have a perception that going into the to the West, that you yes. know the Westerners are 
Yeah, but um, I think you know a lot of the Westerners uh, are less than you know what's happening now in some of the East countries like India. It's getting really bad. But anyway, mm. that's um, digressing. So, um, so you're I talking think... about you you're talking about the gentleman, uh, one of the temple members. You're not talking about uh, your uh, no. your staff member, right? One yeah, of the one of, one pe of the, people of the one, temple. Okay, one of the people of the temple. Yeah. So, um, so he goes. Oh, yeah. He goes. Oh, I've got this habit. I says, oh, what's your habit? He says, well, he goes, I've been drinking for a long time and I can't give it up. Um, so he says, he says, when I go home, I have to have a drink uh, before I eat. I says, oh, okay. And, you know, it's not for me to judge anybody. So I wasn't judging by anything. And then, and then uh, he says, oh, what about meat? I says, no, I don't eat meat. I don't even eat onion and garlic. So... Forget about meat. And uh, he goes, oh, I eat meat. I said, well, so I thought to myself, that's not very nice, you know, because he eats meat and he's allowed in the temple. So, you know, I just, I didn't say anything to him, but I just thought to myself that it wasn't very, wasn't very good because, you know, they, they wouldn't let my, uh, one of my guys, because he was local, to uh, even come into the temple. Um, so I was just sharing that with Prabhuji. Uh, I think it was on Saturday or something. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you, Samir. That is called hypocrisy. Hare Krishna. Thank you for sharing that story. Ben, last time you had this beautiful uh, story unheard of of uh, the policeman saying, I'm a Kshatriya. Do you have any more stories like that? That was extraordinary. That was a story for the Back to Godhead magazine. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Okay. If not, Vaishnava Mataji, how is food for life? Paul, everyone. Yes, it's it's going okay. I did. Uh, in fact, we've changed it to a Wednesday because it's convenient for the lady to pick up the food around four thirty-five. Um, so uh, yes, I'm happy to do that. It was good, but I, I'm getting a bit tired. With the, I have a few health problems, so I'm getting a bit tired. But I'm enjoying it. I I, I can't believe. Um, first of all, it's going to be a one year since I've started cooking. So it's going to be a year, okay. year service. So I'm very happy. To, I'm just praying. Anniversary. Thank you. A <laughs> wonderful service. A wonderful service you're doing there. Yeah, Thank so. you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Vashana Mataji. Quickly to Dharm. How is your Tulsi? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it's uh, got uh, just... Um, a small uh, green shoot. Uh, there's two of them. Do uh, they already have two leaves? No, no. I, I just it's just um, the stem, just the stem. Right. There's no leaves at the moment, so it's been. I think it's been um, quite some time. It's been about, about three weeks, nearly. And it, it's, are you it, chanting in front of Tulsi? Yes, I, yes, I am. Yeah. But that the, you should do, yes. Uh, but the other thing is that uh, um, I've been watering it in the morning. Well, not watering it, I'm spraying it with a spray bottle, clean one. Yes, uh, good. And, and, good. Then, and then covering the top with some um, plastic cellophane. Yes. Um, but somebody said I need to do it in the morning, but also doing the evening as well. Um, okay. But, um, so I, I've, I'll be doing it in the morning. With it. it's, I don't want to over um, waterlog the uh, soil, really. <laughs> Put too much water in, but, um, but I'm not sure why it's not actually growing the leaves at the moment. Maybe it's the soil. It no no. It takes its time. If she has enough water, 
and not too much water and the heat and the light. Uh, you should find a place uh, in the sunlight where she gets a maximum of sunlight. Then she will be fine. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah, I did put it out in the sunlight, but um, it had like three, three stems, but one of them died. Well, not one of them, it disappeared. So I, I didn't really put it in the direct sunlight anymore. Um, I kept it. I think they mentioned it um, at the beginning. You should put it in some shade when it's just germinating. Um, when it's fully grown or when, when it pushes up from the soil, maybe then you expose it to sunlight. But um, So when I put it in the direct sunlight, one of the shoots disappeared. So I, I didn't put it back in the sunlight again. <laughs> Yes, once they're out, they need sunlight, of course. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dam. Hare Krishna. Okay, uh, Rashmi, what do you have to share? What have you learned today? Uh, to today was uh, Bhagavatam class, so it was a lot of detail about <coughs> the type of uh, energies which Krishna has. So uh, Mataji was making us write down like, you know, superior energy. It was quite technical, but it was very interesting. Nevertheless, that superior energy is the antaranga energy and the marginal potency is the tathasta shakti. And what, what was very interesting was, which was the same theme on Friday when we did the Archaitanya Charitamrit class, that uh, the verse which we did, uh, Kaviraj, uh, Srila Kavir, uh, Kaviraj, uh, Krishna, Kavira, Krishna Kaviraj Goswami. Krishna is, Das Kaviraj. Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. He is saying what? in the purport, sorry? Yeah, yeah, okay. So he was explaining uh, in the purport that, um, in the translation, sorry, that actually, you know, we, we call ourselves bhaktas, but that is wrong. In the spirit, in the the bhaktas are the secondary expansions of Krishna. So they are the souls which are in Vaikuntha. So only those uh, those part and parcels of Krishna which are in the spiritual world who are the servitors who are hundred percent service to Krishna. Only those pure pure devotees they are the bhaktas. We are the jivas in the material world we are the jivas but a, a pure devotee is not a jiva so in the spiritual world in vaikuntha there are no jivas there are only bhaktas and they are so they become krishna's antaranga energy, energy superior energy and we are the tatashta shakti which is the marginal potency so this is it's quite technical but we are learning <coughs> it's some, somehow it has both the places we are <coughs> learning the same things uh, and she also we also learned about uh, Narayan what Narayan means so uh, loads of meanings were there uh, one of them was Narayan means he is the refuge of all living beings so one of the meanings was uh, of uh, Narayan was that so that's what we are uh, discussing okay thank you very much yeah. How is your Sunday uh, Sangha going? Tell us a little bit about your Sunday Sangha. What you're doing and are people uh, progressing? So Mia said last time so nicely, uh, everyone, and uh, that is really, that was extraordinary nice, Samir. Uh, he felt everybody here on this forum in this Sangha are progressing very much. And, uh, I think I that's something that which everybody has to assess themselves. Is yeah, how of can course, somebody yeah. else say that? <laughs> one, how one can. can. I can. Else? I can also say. By, I don't by think he, I am. I'm still where I am. Uh, the, you might think that, but I can by hearing uh, someone talk. One can easily find out where I at. Anyway, that's just. Uh, different yeah, question yeah. here. It was just so, nice that Samir expressed that very nicely. So, what about your Sangha on Sunday? Are they progressing? I don't know about that. We are reading. 
So we are, we've just started the fourth chapter, Transcendental Knowledge. We've just started. What I do is, just to keep them interested also, if there is a correlation and if there is a Krishna Katha, like from Srimad Bhagavatam or something which we have heard over all these years, what you have told, something like that, I keep on narrating in between. So, so they get an idea because I doubt we will ever read Srimad Bhagavatam together. But uh, so that just, you know, I feel like Prahlad Maharaj's story or Nashinga Dev's story or something like that. All of those little, little things we do. But they are, they are chanting. They are, uh, they are chanting, which is, I think that's so good. I, it took me 15 years to pick up the beads and 15, 20 years. And they are just in what one year they have started chanting, which is really nice. Hare Krishna. So that is by your, by your inspiration and by your potency. If you would uh, uh, do this Zanka 15 years ago, nobody would pick up Sabitza. But because you picked up your pizza and you inspiring them within one year, they picking up the pizza. That so, is your uh, success. <laughs> no, no, no. I wouldn't say that. Prabhuji, but one thing I will share with everyone, which was so nice. You know, um, because I attend these classes with all these Matajis, I wish I could uh, invite you all, but it is a strictly a ladies only group. So, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> there's no men allowed. Um, in that group. So, but uh, Krishna is allowed, but Krishna does not want to take the opportunity. Unfortunately, Krishna is allowed. Uh, my son. Krishna is there in that group. Don't worry. No, my Krishna is Prabhuji. Oh, you Krishna. <laughs> you Krishna. He's allowed, but Shishto Mataji told him a few times, but uh, Krishna always has an excuse. So, uh, okay. So, what's the story? We are running out of time. Is, what's yes, the story? The story is. Uh, uh, you know, we were uh, uh, we were discussing about how uh, everybody must reflect back, and um, so you know, she was explaining to us how it is necessary to know about other devotees, to read the katha about other devotees, because then the mirror comes in front of you, and then you can judge for yourself where you are. Unless that mirror comes in front of you, uh, and people uh, people just are praising you, then you will never progress. So she was giving us this example of. One person is in Delhi. I think I shared it with you. This man is a businessman. He's a very rich, very, very uh, 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 busy man. Now, what he does is every Ekadashi goes from Delhi to Vrindavan. He drives and then he does Govardhan Parikrama, does 64 rounds and he comes back. And only once he comes back, he breaks his Ekadashi fast. Now, and he does every Ekadashi, he does Nirjal. Now, that's an austerity, but besides the point, he has taken a vow because of his business, he was finding that he was not able to do his 16 rounds. So now he has vowed to his spiritual master uh, that I will not eat anything until I finish my 16 rounds. So sometimes it, he was, uh, this Mataji was saying that it happens that this brother of hers, he, it is nighttime before he can eat anything because he's not managed to do his 16 rounds. So he cannot break his vow. So he managed, if once he finishes 16 rounds and he does that. So when this, when this lady, she went to this man and she said, Oh, how did you get this inspiration? So this, uh, this gentleman was so, so humble. He said, what you're talking about me? I am nothing. When I went to Vrindavan, I met this man, this man, he does three, uh, three circu circum um, ambulations of Govardhan in one day, three. And he's for, he's continuous. He's, he's only in his fifties. He's given up his job. He's given up everything. He's living, living somewhere uh, in Govardhan, um, in some ashram. And he's doing th three Govardhan Parikramas. And when they ask this man, <laughs> oh, you're so great. This man was even more humble. He's saying, what you're talking about me? I'll give you an example of this other man. This other man is a sadhu. He has hundred and one, uh, thousand and one stones. So what he does, he does Dandavat Parikram, uh, Parikrama. So he puts that one sto stone down. There's Danda Dandavat. Like that, He then he gets up, then puts the second stone down. Then he gets up. So can you imagine in the same spot, he's doing Dandavat Parikrama of Govardhan, hundred, thousand and one times. 
and he's finishing of course he's chanting as well while he's doing so these two this guy this delhi guy asked him that uh, uh prabhu ji you are doing all this but do you really think you will finish he's been this uh, so far he's done it for 16 years this uh, and he's not yet finished he's been doing this for 16 years this sadhu so they this man from delhi asked this guy that i do you think in this lifetime i am you are going to finish so this sadhu said do you really think i'm interested in finishing i'm not interested in finishing <laughs> i'm just interested in doing oh thank you sir that's the point <laughs> that's a point thank you very much rashmi mata ji that was a beautiful story it reminds us on the brihad bhagavatam ridam by sanatan goswami so first part where narada muni uh, goes to the different personalities and uh, saying from uh, lord shiva to um, lord brahma and everyone and saying you are the recipient of krishna's mercy and they're saying oh no i'm nothing go go to uh, go to lord uh, go to subhandavas and you will find out uh, who is doing who has krishna's favor and so on and so on go to pralat and so that similar in humility uh, when for instance when uh, narada muni praised his father brahma he, he put his hands over his ears what are you saying i'm not the recipient of krishna's mercy i have offended him i've stolen his cows and i've stolen his cowherd boys and you think i'm the recipient of krishna's special mercy no you go on go to lord shiva he has and so on and lord shiva also puts him forward to the pandavas and asas and lakshmi ji and so on so similar story thank you very much rashmi mata ji for this beautiful story and your uh, what you have learned in the sangha and here we stop for tonight and we'll see you all back on saturday hopefully uh, stay well samia you want to say something no i'm just going to say hare krishna thank you Hare Krishna. We had a very nice focus session tonight and we shall carry on in this way. Thank you everyone. Thank you Samia. Thank you Ben Darm uh, and everyone else. Varshana Mataji. Hare Krishna. See you on Saturday. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.